wrists and hands. Useful things. Wrists, particularly in yoga, they load bare a lot, but they do tend to give people quite a lot of grief. And so this video is going to be teaching you how to get your wrists in tip top condition so that you don't get any of the unwanted niggles. So if you guys want to jump straight into the exercises, go to these minutes. For those of you who want to geek out with me, here is the little blurb about hands and the reason I've given you these certain exercises. So first of all, one of the exercises we're going to do is actually rubbing the hands together. And the reason that we're doing that is actually the feeding pattern of the brain goes from the back to the front. And just in front of the motor cortex, you have your sensory cortex. If we can wake up the sensory cortex first, the motor cortex is more likely to be fired up at a much higher level. Also, if you want to get good at any kind of movement or you're about to train, it is worth getting the hands, first of all, warmed up through touch and then through different movements, because not only is that going to be good for the hands and the wrists and the forearms, but actually because your hands occupy so much space in the homunculus in the brain, they actually help to turn on other centers in the brain meaning you're going to get more out of your practice. So let's launch straight into the exercises. And like I just mentioned, we should start with some kind of touch. Rubbing the hands together, almost as if you're washing your hands, and then even giving individual fingers attention. So you can just literally rub down in a little circle each of the digits. The second exercise that we're going to do actually involves still using some level of touch, but we're also going to start getting more of the joint range available in the fingers and you're going to feel your forearms as a result because actually where the connection points of the fingers feed down, they connect all the way into the muscles around here in the forearm. So the exercise is basically taking your fingers and curling them in towards your palm as closely as possible, keeping them almost in contact until you get to the very edge of the palm and then you can reach the hand out. Let's do three of these little snaky hands, and then we can reverse it. The palm goes down and you're trying to keep the fingers again in contact with the palm as you slide the joints into the greatest range possible up into your high five position. Let's cross over to the other side. Left fingers curling them in at the top like a wave and then slowly snaking them out. If you have got joints that are achy, you know, arthritis tends to start in fingers, then please don't do this. Make sure you're kind to yourself. After the third one, we reverse it. Palms down and then slowly slippy slide it all the way up. Brilliant, moving on. We're now gonna start actually waking up individual fingers. Like I said, they occupy a lot of space in the brain and they also connect into the forearms. So initially when you start these, they can be a little bit tricky. Be patient and I'll teach you a little hack as well. So we're gonna start just circling the thumbs. We can do three to five reps in one direction and then we can swap. But often what we find is as we start to move along the digits of the fingers, things start to get a little more tricky. So here, index finger is still pretty reasonably okay. Where things start falling apart, I'd say, is middle finger. People really, really struggle with the middle finger. So a little hack to get the middle finger's dexterity and your motor ability in those digits working much harder, take one hand, make like a little web that kind of plants the other fingers down, and that will leave your middle finger free to move on its own. When you start getting really good at this, you can then Abandon this little hack and see if you can take the circles of the joints on its own. Now let's go on to ring finger. So ring finger I have found I can kind of do, but I still see a bit of movement from the other fingers. <laughs> so again, I go in with my web. Once you've done three to five reps, on your ring finger, we finish with little finger. And little finger, yes, you can use the little web technique that I've been showing you, or what I do is squash the other fingers together and I just isolate the little finger on its own. The next exercise is one that we see a lot in people who love martial arts, and it's because it's really good on working both the extensors and the flexors as we open and close the hands really, really fast in these sort of star actions. Now you can start off with maybe 10 reps, and as your stamina improves, you can go all the way up to 100 reps. I think I've just done about 40, and my forearms are absolutely burning. And this is great because it's getting extra blood flow into your wrists ready for your practice. 
Okay, but now let's get juicy into the actual wrists because wrists are joints that tend to get quite neglected. We tend to just fixate them in yoga in one position and we never really come out of this position. To get the most out of your wrists, we wanna teach them to move in lots of dynamic ways. And so what I'm gonna teach you is a figure of eight with your wrist. So I want you to begin with your right palm facing up towards the ceiling as if you're holding a tray. From the level of your wrist, flex the palm up towards you let the little finger lead the way initially. So little finger is gonna curve down. And once your forearm is down, you're gonna high five me. So palm comes up from the level of the wrist. Little finger is always leading the way. So little finger is gonna rotate down. And then we're gonna go through this figure of eight motion about three to five times. Brilliant. So the next exercise is the same thing, same wrist, but we're gonna turn the palm down towards the ground. And from the level of the wrist, you're gonna bend down, almost as if you're trying to high five your own forearm. The thumb this time, however, is gonna lead the way. So it's gonna rotate you up. And then your palm is gonna open in an upside down high five towards me, thumb again leading the way on the way up. And these are your figure of eights now with thumb leading the way. These are not only good for your wrist, guys, they're really good for your brain. After you've done the third one, let's change over to the right hand. So we're gonna start off with right palm holding a tray. Right palm high fives you. Eh. Little finger leads the way, go down. High five me, little finger leads the way. Let's do two more of those. We're going to now finish off with the thumb leading the way. So palm is down. Palm imagines it's gonna touch the forearm as it flexes down. Thumb leads the way for the first portion of the eight. And then thumb leads the way for the second portion. And we'll finish with two more repetitions. It's tough, but it feels mega good as well. Right, onto your mat for your yoga practice. So with yoga, although our wrists are in what we call extension, we do tend to actually work our flexes more because we're resisting against the ground in the poses like plank, down dog, uh, chaturanga, crow pose. So actually what we wanna do is try and get more of your forearm extensors firing and a really kind of nasty way of doing that but very effective is to turn your hands around to face the back of your mat. Palms are gonna to come towards the floor. Heel of the hand is gonna stay grounded and the rest of the palm ugh, is gonna try and lift up against gravity. Now this is end range, right? So we're not actually getting the full spectrum of the forearm extensors, but it's a really great start. If we wanna progress this, you need two blocks. And you're gonna make like a little table. In fact, you can do this on a table, you don't need two blocks. You also don't have to hold a block, you can hold a water bottle or any kind of weight. And we're gonna fix the hand over the top of the forearm and you're gonna work on your extension. Cool guys, let's switch it over onto the other side. I've only done five reps with you, but please see how many you can tolerate. Remember the more you do the better. Think of how long your yoga practice lasts and how short we've just worked on these extensors. They need to try and equal out as much as possible, which means you do need to load up the reps as much as you can. Okay, final tip that I'm gonna leave you with. If your wrists don't like to go into extension, most of us actually don't like very deep extension. We make like a little T with our hands. We see that the angle around the wrists is actually not as deep as we need them for something like a handstand. So if you feel that it's straining your wrists and that it's too much and it's kind of stealing the joy out of your practice, a little hack is to take your yoga mat, roll up the end of it, and then use your hands on the wedge that the yoga mat has created. If that feels a little wobbly for you and you're not enjoying using the yoga mat, but you see the value in this tip, then make sure you invest in some blocks. They have a little angle on them. I think they're called handstand blocks. Check that they've got the angle so that the part closest to you is higher up and the part further away, the fingers are down. Okay guys, thank you very much for joining me for this wrist and hand session. For those of you guys who have ever taken the time to comment, like, or share any of my work, thank you so, so much. It helps more than you know. And also for any of you guys who feel like, ooh, I love this juicy anatomy stuff, please do click on the link. It'll take you through to my website. You can sign up to my email list and there you're gonna get loads of amazing weekly free anatomy tips for your yoga practice. She does feel really good. I might start using this more in life. Anyway, don't touch your face, COVID.